Hi guys, welcome to So Janelle. Kamusta po sa inyong lahat? You are watching the show that brings you stories of immigration and representation. Here on our program, every week we bring you stories of you know people coming here from the Philippines, making a life for themselves, but also uh, people who were born and raised here, making a name for themselves and bringing up and lifting up the Filipino flag. One such is our guest this afternoon. I've been wanting to talk to her. This has been what one year in the making. Yeah. And I'm finally happy now that we are making it happen. Sam Morales is joining us on So Janelle. Hello and Hi. welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad we can finally do this. Exactly. But first, thank you for thank you to your Lola. This is how we are Filipinos, <laughs> yes. right? Uh, Lola um, has open uh, her door to us mm -hmm. we are here at her place thank you for that no of course but also congratulations sam for everything <laughs> thank you we first heard of you because of that hit netflix remake mm -hmm. of the that 70s show mm -hmm. which really launched uh the careers of Ashton Kutcher, uh, Mila Kunis. But that 90s show features a Filipina in one of the lead roles, Sam. Um, what I find fascinating is the way it all started for you as well. So why don't you take us through that? Well, I have always loved performing. I've always loved acting, singing, dancing, not so much. Um, <laughs> but I, was in, I started in a lot of musicals mm -hmm. and I went to a performing arts high school. And at my performing arts high school, I saw a flyer. I was maybe, I think I was 16 at the time that I saw this flyer. And it was an open casting call for that 90s show. Okay. And I was a big fan of that 70s show because it was on Netflix. I binge watched it all, uh, all the way through over quarantine. Right. I loved this show. Right. And there was this flyer like, oh, that 70s show spinoff open casting call right and initially I wasn't going to submit to it but then all of my friends started submitting mm -hmm. hearing feedback and getting callbacks and I was like I'm right I had FOMO like, it, like complete yeah. FOMO that's just who I am as Sam I just really like being included in things right so FOMO is the reason why I do a lot of things they asked me to submit a video okay but this video wasn't even an audition, it was more like an introduction video. I am a first generation Filipino American. Both my parents immigrated from the Philippines and came here, I think in the 90s. From the 90s, I love Miss Lauren Hill. The fashion of the 90s is so good. This shirt is actually from the 90s. It's my mom's. She, it's, she wore this on her first date with my dad. And I said in my video, I relate the most to Sophia. Yes. Coming from an immigrant family, I know the feeling of wanting to be one thing, but your your head saying one thing, but your heart wanting another. Oh, yeah. um, and I'm so lucky to be from this family that really values the arts mm -hmm. and has only ever been supportive of me being an artist and an actor and pursuing this as a career. Right, not your typical Filipino family. No, right. and I like I felt so privileged because. Um, there was just that open door of be whoever you want to be, just be happy. Did you tell them that you were submitting no. for this? Yes. My mom didn't know that I was doing this until maybe I had a third audition. And then I was like, oh mom, by the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I, I seem to be getting pretty far in this. Yeah. I didn't think that anything was going to come of it, but I feel like now is the time to tell you I'm doing this thing. I did all of this myself. Right. I emailed them my video. Okay. And then they came back to me. They called me. They said, we want to see you live. Right. Uh, such a whirlwind, but I didn't even, it didn't even register register to me that this was a huge thing right because well, i thought that it was just like oh this fun thing I, it's and you were just doing it because you had the fear of missing out yeah but for those who don't understand what yeah. fomo is there <laughs> also is jomo now the joy of missing out oh like, yeah. i like that as a mom i use that a lot jomo, jomo. okay you oh, get invited great. to go i go jomo <laughs> i'll go home i'll stay I home spend time with my kids but uh, I mean, for youngsters, mm -hmm. like young like you guys, mm -hmm. um, there is FOMO is real. Yeah. But what I'm picking up from what you had just relayed to me is also that you win big when you do things with nothing to lose. Yes. Right. I think the best auditions that I've ever 
done uh -huh. or the things that I've booked mm -hmm. and the the most fulfilling experience that I've had mm -hmm. were because I wasn't expecting anything from it. Right. I just do it because I love the thing. Right. I was auditioning not because I thought that I was going to get the part right. or that I was going to get cast because yeah. like, oh, who gets cast out of an open call? In my head, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> me. Sam Morelos. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't think that it, there was a an, there was no end goal for me. Right. I, so, yeah. yeah, somebody though, something from your video resonated with somebody from the casting yeah. team. Did you ever find out what? Did you have you ever I, spoken to them and asked like why why, why? why? what 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 what, what, what yeah what spoke to them? It's funny because like the EP's Lindsay Turner, she told me the second that I saw your phone propped up on the floor mm -hmm. for your slate, I knew that you were the one. It was so strange because I had never done a self tape before. So my self tapes they were the jankiest setups in the world. Like, it took me hours to move my couch out of right, my living room. Right. And they asked Guess for a full nothing. body slate. And yes. I was like, I don't know how to do that. And I propped up so many books on the floor and like finagled my camera yes. on the floor. Yes. With I had to take a painting off my wall to get like a blank wall, but right. it really looked like I emptied out my living room. Yes. And it didn't look professional at all, but it was just like a very, it, it just seemed very raw and grounded, I guess, because it, it just seemed real because I was just this kid. That's what they were looking for. Yeah. And what about you? You said that you, you know, it was one thing that you really didn't really prepare for. But really in life, the moment we're born, we're being raised, the choices that we make lead us to the things that we call life. Yeah. What do you think about your Filipino background prepared you for the life that you have now? Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about that and more when we return on the show. Don't go away. Thank you for sharing your time with us here on So Janelle. This is your go-to for stories of uh, immigration and representation. Happy Sunday if you're watching on TFC. Happy Saturday if you're watching on ANC. And happy Monday if you're watching on a local channel in Southern California, KXLA Channel 44. We are also available on demand on I Want TFC. And we are always on on our social media platforms at So Janelle TV. Having such a great time this afternoon talking to Sam Morales. Uh, you are... Uh, to me, I feel like you are uh, the intersection of what we care most about on this program, which is immigration and representation. Because here you are representing on a hit Netflix series, but also your immigrant upbringing. You did allude earlier, your immigrant upbringing. Mm -hmm. And I like that you specify that because you are born and raised here. But what do you mean when you say immigrant upbringing? It's a very interesting childhood that I had because I had to experience two different worlds. Mm -hmm. Both my parents are immigrants from the Philippines. I'm first generation. Mm -hmm. So there's also a learning curve for them to adjust to the culture here, mm -hmm. which I had to become aware of at a very young age because the way that we acted around my family and at home was very different from not school? very yeah from from school. I my parents were very committed to learn, having me learn Tagalog, yeah. understand the culture, be exposed to it. Uh, but and I and I did speak Tagalog when I was a kid. Mahal kita. You still do? Kunti lang. <laughs> oh, no, kunti lang po. <laughs> See, I got it. Out. I got it out of her. All right, and then. Uh, but once I started school, I actually would throw tantrums mm -hmm. if they spoke to me in anything but English. And I think that that was some sort of internalized, even at a young age, it could really exist some sort of internalized racism, I guess, mm -hmm. to yourself. Like, I want to fit in. I want to fit in so hard that if we, I speak another language than my peers, than my, mm -hmm. um, than my classmates, then I am going to be classified as other. Right. So I kind of uh, pushed that side of me away, even though uh, on a daily basis, I, I can understand uh, maybe 80% of the conversations that I have at home. Right. Is but, it is it almost like um, being two persons? The yeah. one person at home with your family, yeah. with your Lolo and Lola, with your cousins, and then the one person for the world. For the world. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a little more diluted because I grew up and had a... My entire childhood was that. Mm -hmm compared to my mom who came here when she was 
an, a, a, an adult when she was 24. Mm -hmm. And that's a deeper learning curve, mm -hmm. I think, and a larger adjustment. And I can't say that I can completely relate to an immigrant story, but I can empathize because my entire family is made up of immigrants. So how much, I know you're playing the character of Nikki mm -hmm. in that 90s show, but how much of that Filipino in you is mm -hmm. shaping Nikki for the world to see? Right. Yeah. Actually, there's one thing that happened on set which like made me feel so seen and really filled my heart because there are some scenes in Nikki's bedroom mm -hmm. and one day I walked onto set for rehearsal and whatever and I ran into the set designer um, Tara I walked on and there were Filipino flags in Nikki's bedroom oh. and I and that's deliberate it, it was like very intentional mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. just that small thing to to see not vocally but visually that Nikki is proud of her heritage is just very Filipino because mm -hmm. Uh, every Filipino person I know is proud. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is just something of the culture. Right. Everyone is proud to be of this community. Mm -hmm. I, I can say confidently that Nikki will always be Filipino. Mm -hmm. And because that's just who I am. Mm -hmm. And I can't pretend that I am anything else. Right. Because uh, of my experience as a first generation Filipino American and the way that I've experienced Filipino culture, uh, there's a big emphasis on community mm -hmm. and loyalty and trust and love. And so there is an emphasis in Nikki's personality mm -hmm. on the show. And we're so lucky because Nikki is going to be back mm -hmm. June 27th for season two of the That 90 Show. We're going to be talking about that when we return on the show. Don't go away. This is my dad's mom. I call her Oya because uh, my kuya couldn't say Lolo or Lola, so he said Oyo and Oya, and it stuck. So this is my Oya, and this is my mom. <laughs> Jennifer, I call her Nai. As a kid, um, when I say, you know, being adventurous, like she would really try to um, go out of her way. Um, I would say like uh, to, to make uh, her friends laugh, you know, and out of, you know, that being a jester, being, um, she would always do things for, for other people. When she sat there before, she would have her head here and feet there, but, <laughs> and then read books. I always tell my grandkids, it's just grow and never stop growing and be the best version of yourself, you know, just develop yourself because uh, only by learning from others and from reading can you really grow and really, like I said, be the best version of what the Lord has made you to be, you know, Sam.